Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Dara, I'm one of your TV station managers this year. And uh, so far this year we've shown you a few Premiere Pro tutorials and then how to uh, video edit the basics. So I'm going to show you now in a video so that you can uh, refresh your minds and whatnot. Uh, so I've opened Premiere Pro here. And when you open it and put in your the title of your video, I'm going to call this Workshop 1, as I did in the workshop that I did in uh, the Mac Labs. And uh, when you open it, you'll have nothing there. It's going to be like a blank canvas four empty panels they're all gray as you can see there's nothing done yet to the video so on the top left we have this one here this one is your preview your preview will show you exactly what you're looking at from your content spin so you can scrub through it and pick out a, a particular section of that clip or picture or whatever that you want to use in your final video the bottom left one where it says import media to start this is going to be your content spin this is where you put all of your uh, content including pictures mp3 files uh, any kind of audio files like music or uh, video clips themselves moving across to the bottom right we have this long one this is the timeline a sequence of events from start to finish uh, chronologically so we're on zero minutes zero seconds in because there's nothing there uh, all the way to the end of the video so this is going to be where you're going to be doing most of your manipulation and editing of the video top right is your output this is going to be your uh, final video and how it looks uh, in the uh, final cut or, or whatever so we're going to start by importing our media so we can start putting stuff onto our canvas by doing that i'm going to go up to file i'm going to go down to import or if you want to use a keyboard shortcut to go uh, to find a window with all your files in it Control i on a pc or command i on a mac uh, but i'm going to go up to file anyway and uh, now i'm going to open up a video so we can get started i'm going to open up the same one i used in the uh, tutorials actually and importing files and here it is it's down here in the bottom left in my contents bin like i thought it would be i'm also going to import a lower third as well cool so now i have two things in my contents bin you can see i have a png image here black background with a purple lower third and i have a video so the first thing i'm going to want to do is click on the video that i want and here it is and i can drag it across to the right and drop it into the content into the uh, timeline rather and when i've done that uh, there's a few changes that occur on the screen as you can see on the top right we can see that we now have an output because we have something uh, in our video to work with and on the bottom right we have our timeline up and running in the timeline we have a series of channels here going horizontally across these lines if you look at where my mouse is right now v3 v3 v2 v1 the v channels here they're all video channels so anything that is in any of these channels above where my mouse is are going to be things that are visual that you can see videos and pictures anything below this kind of border line here you have a1 a2 a3 the a1 a2 a3 channels are audio channels so anything that is sound audio or music goes in here as you can see there's a tiny border between the two and if i hover my mouse on that border my mouse turns into a black a double black arrowed uh, icon and i can click and drag that border up and down so I can move and manipulate where I want my sound and my audio. If I click and drag on this blue double line thing here, it moves around, the two of them move around. That is because the dark one on the bottom is in the audio channel, A1, and the top light blue one is in the V channel. These are connected, this is the video that I have here. And if I hit the space bar, it'll- uh, The T101 lecture right now is so- As you can see. Um, so yes, this is the video, and because the dark blue and the light blue are connected, uh, you can tell that they're the same video. If I want to unlink them so the video and the, uh, uh, so I can work with the video and the audio separately, I can right click on a PC or on a Mac. I think it's uh, you hit control, hold down the control key while clicking, and you should get um, a little window. When you go up on it, it'll say unlink. You can click unlink, and now I can click and drag, and they move independently as you can see and because they're moving independently if I hit play when there's no audio below this clip no audio comes out but if I was to move my ticker this little thin uh, vertical blue line here is the ticker this shows you second by second frame by frame what's happening <laughs> right if I move it over here you couple of things on that thanks to you it's out of sync as you can see and it's out of sync because the audio down here is not in line perfectly with the video so i'm just going to relink them by highlighting them and right click and go back to link so what we want to do is i'm just actually going to mute it so it's easier for me to work uh, i'm going to show you how to splice the clip uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to right now we're in the mouse clip we're moving things around if you move over here this is your uh, your tool box here 
the one that's lit up blue is the selection tool and it says V beside it because the V on the control on your uh, keyboard is the keyboard shortcut and by hitting it at any point when you're on any tool you will go immediately back to the selection tool selection tool lets you click and drag and manipulate things that way I'm going to click on this one here it's a razor tool if you hover over it it's a razor it looks like a little razor icon kind of a rectangle and it has a C in brackets beside it if I click on that I am now my mouse now turns into a razor as you can see with the red line through it and what that does means uh, it means that I can splice a clip I can slice a line through a clip at the exact frame that it is paused on up here and it cuts them into two independent clips so I'm going to move my uh, mouse down over to um, I'm actually going to splice a clip where it actually cuts so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my left and right arrow keys to find a clip I want to splice and there's one here I know is coming up it's black as you can see it's black because he is opening the door to the fridge use the left and right arrow keys as I said I'm going to go frame by frame one two three find that black there that blackness is the cut that's where the clip starts so I'm going to move my mouse down on that exact frame and I'm going to click with my razor tool. Now, as you can see, it turns into two separate clips. I've uh, used the V uh, key on my keyboard to switch back to the selection tool, or you can go over here and click it. And I'm gonna click and drag them apart. So now there are two independent clips, as you can see. And there's a gap in between. You can tell when there's a gap because there won't be a yellow uh, line up at the top. So it goes to black, there's nothing there. And then it comes up again. Um, brilliant. So now I can move these around. As you can see, and I can do it again for the next uh, scene. So I'm going to go frame by frame through. Hitting the I'm going to go right up, further up. There's the next clip. So it cuts to this girl, right? So what I want to do now is I want to find the exact frame that it changes. And there it is. That's the exact frame there. So I'm going to go back to my razor tool by hitting C on my keyboard or going over and clicking it over here. Bringing my razor down and cutting it there. And you can continue doing this for each scene in the video uh, if you. I'm just going to do it for a couple of them so it's easy to move. Ooh, that's my phone. So I'm going to bring it to here. And if I can find the frame. There it is. There it is. The exact frame. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my razor tool. I'm going to bring that down and I'm going to make a splice. I'm actually also going to highlight this massive clip at the end and I'm just going to hit delete. Uh, on my keyboard or backspace on my, um, so I, I just want to make it easier to work with I have three independent clips now uh, also because my clips are quite small now you can actually go down to this bar at the bottom of your timeline click and drag you can go back and forth if there's a lot of things in your workspace you could have a video that's an hour long after all with lots of splices and changes made to it so I'm gonna to go to the little node at the end of it and I'm gonna click and drag it inward like this so I'm zooming right in on the clip it's not making my clips longer make no, make no mistake there it's actually just uh, zooming in so that I can see the milliseconds a little bit easier you can also if you're using a laptop like I am now you can kind of pinch your um, control pad that you use for your mouse to move it in or out whichever you prefer so I'm going to click and drag these clips around. And as you can see, now that I'm moving them, they're no longer in the order they were because instead- Oh, any hangover cure is that. And you can do that for as many clips as you want. That's how you rearrange clips and splice them in uh, when you're making a short film or, or whatever. So if I bring them back to where they I love pizza. I can do that any way I want. However, when you are moving your clips around, do make sure that you don't leave gaps, as I said, because if you move it here and there's that gap in between the two yellow lines, that tells you that that's just going to be black, nothing, no sound, no anything. Uh, so make sure that everything is connected, and you'll know it's connected when, if you move the clip over, it'll automatically leave that kind of uh, thin black vertical line to show that they're magnetic, magnetic to each other, rather, uh, so they clip on each other if you drag it even more so over you can see the opacity there it's transparent it's actually moving on top of the other clip and if I let go it actually I wish I part of that clip so you don't want that I'm gonna hit control Z to go back and undo if you ever do something that you make a mistake control Z to undo or if you're on a Mac like not like I am I'm on a PC uh, use command Z so command Z for Mac control Z for a PC or else alternatively go up to file 
uh, where or edit rather, which is beside file, and you have read under editor. You have undo or redo or whatever you please. Um, so yeah, try and keep them separate so they're not uh, overlapping. Um, so the next thing I want to show you is how to delete uh, without having to splice. If you want to just, you know, so I don't say I don't want to open the door. I don't. Like that door. I just want to start with him taking the pizza out of the fridge. You can actually move your mouse over the edge of the clip like it is here and it'll turn to a red kind of bracket arrow icon. If I click and drag it in, I've deleted the part of him. Out. Say I don't like that, I can either edit undo as I said, or you can just click and drag it back out. And it turns. So, that's, that's pretty handy to have. Um, I'm actually going to show you something else. Also, also, by the way, when you're working in your timeline, you can see this kind of thin blue line going around that panel. That tells you this is the active panel. Um, there's four different panels, as I said, whichever panel you are currently clicked into will be the active one with the blue line and tell you that you can do things in there. So if I was to click into the contents bin panel, now this is lit up blue instead, and if I was to double click on one of my pieces of content, they will appear in the preview above so I can kind of preview them. And if I hit, hit spacebar now, it doesn't play the one on the top right anymore because I'm in a different panel. If I'm in this panel and I'm active and I hit spacebar, it plays this PNG image. This is a bad example though, of course, because this is a still image, so it doesn't move. But if I was to double click on my video at any point and highlight- You're on a lookalike outside spa. Now my Who's the guy? playing with the space bar as opposed to my output on the top right. So just figured that might be something you might need to know. Um, so the next thing I really want to show you guys is drag my ticker over to the guy opening the fridge again. Say I want to give him a name, I want to give him a lower third, like in RT News, where it comes up at the bottom, Brian Dobson, RT News, or whatever. Uh, that's what I have over here. This PNG image right here is a lower third, the DSU TV official lower third. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag that over. And as you can see, it appears now in another channel as a pink, uh, a pink strip. And I'm not going to put this on top of, uh, over the clip, rather, because as you can see, it's opacity again. You can see transparent. If I let go, it will, I'm going to put this out. It, it literally just gets rid of him altogether. So I'm going to go control and do. As I said, don't put things on top of each other, but rather above. So now this is what the other channels are used for. So I'm now on V2. I'm going to put this above, directly above him. As you can see now, I have a and what I want to do, because everything works in layers in um, both Premiere Pro and Photoshop, if you're used to that, so things are going to go on top of each other. If I was to put him on top of the lower third, as you can see, or above him, see the lower third, even though it's clearly in line with my ticker, and that is because, as I said, layers. So this layer is on top, so now I can see it. So if I want to give him name I would have to highlight the clip by clicking it going up to title go to new title default still uh, you can name the title if you want this isn't the title that's going to appear this is just the name of the piece of content so I'm just going to leave it a title too it doesn't really matter um, and as you get to see you get a, a little box here and this is rather like if you use Microsoft Word or anything like that I can go up to the T tool here as opposed to the selection tool which is the mouse and I can click and draw, make a box, and I can type in a name. So I'm going to call him Kevin because that is his name. And in this title feature, you can you have a lot of options here. You can uh, change it in whatever way you want. I'm going to change the font to Alternate Gothic because that's the one I like. Uh, we're also going to change the size. I'm going to size it up here. And you can also change the color, but I'm actually going to leave it white. But yeah, you can play around with these options. I'm not going to go too much into detail because it's something uh, you can kind of play around with and it's easy. I'm going to go to the Move tool here and click and drag Kevin to bring the name down and put it just over the lower third. Now that I'm finished, I can just hit X and close out of it. And as you can see, it appears here. In the contents bin, I now have... I now have... Once it comes up in the lower third... Here we go, I, can, I have Kevin, so I can click and drag that in. And again, don't put it over it, but above. Not over, above, because it will delete it. And I says it's a case of layers. So when you have it like this, Kevin should appear above the lower third, which is above the video of him. 
So I have like a play, you have a lower third. But it doesn't look that good with it just sort of appearing everywhere, like that, and then disappearing afterwards. I wish I was made of Like that. So instead I want to put a little bit of a white bonnet, like a, an effect. To do that, I'm going to go up to Effects, which is located at the top, just after Color, and before Audio. Then I'm going to go over to my effects panel here. You have loads of different folders of different effects in them. I'm just actually going to do a quick search because you can search the effect you want as opposed to going through every effect in every folder. That'll take a long time. So I'm going to type in wipe. That's what I want. And as you can see, there's a lot of different wipes here. Video transitions, wipes. So we band wipe, barn door, uh, gradient wipe, inset. I'm going to go right down to the bottom and just use a regular wipe. And what you do this effect is you click and you drag it and you bring it over and you put it on top of the clip at the beginning so it wipes in. As you can see, my mouse is blinking green there. That means that I'm applying the effect. So I'm gonna let go. And now, the word Kevin there, you might've saw it, wiped in. However, you, because there's two different layers, as you can see, channel one and channel two, or V2 and V3, I have to put the wipe on both. So I'm gonna click and drag that and also put it onto the lower third. So now if I bring it to the start and hit play, it wipes in, as you can see. All you also need to uh, put a wipe so it wipes out as opposed to disappearing. So I'm going to go over, click and drag, bring it down here, put it at the beginning, of, at the end of that clip rather, and the end of the lower third. So now it should wipe in. If I hit play, lagging there. Um, that happens when you're I wish I was made out of pizza. To let you know that that's not going to be a very smooth clip. But once we've uh, exported the video, that will be very, very smooth. So you can get that. Um, so after you've applied that effect, and it should play, I'm actually going to turn my sound back on. Brilliant. So as I was saying earlier, you can also move your mouse over the uh, beginning of the clip, and it'll have a red bracket arrow icon. And if I click and I drag that in, I can make my uh, lower third shorter. Instead of lasting five seconds, it'll last maybe three. Uh, but again, remember, one is longer than the other. So I want them the same length. I'm going to click and drag that in and click and drag that one in so that they are, oops, so that they are at the same length. So let's try that. It's shorter now. It is lagging, don't mind that. If you need to render something, a particular clip, so this, you can render everything by going up to sequence at the top and then hitting render, but you have a lot of render options. I don't want to render the whole clip because that uh, bar will come up and it'll have to render for a good while. Instead, I want to just render this tiny clip here that's red. Highlight the clip that you want to render, go up to sequence and then render selection. But I don't need to do that just yet. That's just uh, how you would do it. Uh, what I want to show you now is I'm going to delete the uh, white on it so that I can show you this, otherwise it's a little bit awkward with the white, uh, is how to sort of animate uh, with the lower third. And how we're gonna do that is I'm gonna click here at the beginning and I'm gonna use my left and right arrow keys, as I said, to get the exact frame where the lower third appears. And there it is, that's where it appears. I'm gonna zoom in to make it easier for myself. I'm gonna go up to editing again, because we're still in effects. Effect control within editing and highlight the clip. I'm gonna start with the lower third. As you can see here, you have motion, FX motion. Now this is quite like a maths function, right? We're gonna open this and we're going to go to, there's two stopwatches, scale and position. The scale right now is 100 because it's 100%. This is how big it normally is and the position is currently the coordinates that it is on. So I'm gonna hit the scale stopwatch and the position stopwatch to make them both blue. Now this allows me to have these key points and we're gonna keyframe with this. So what I'm gonna do now is it registers now that this first frame of the clip is the first key point. The next thing I'm going to do is move my uh, ticker all the way to the last frame. I'm going to use my arrow keys again to find the exact frame. And there's the last one we found uh, right before it disappears. And what we're going to do now, while it's still in the blue uh, stopwatches, we're going to make the scale bigger. And I'm going to also change the positioning so that it goes up here. And the right you can move it that way um so now when i hit play, look towards you and if i want to make the kevin move along with it as well i do the exact same thing so i'm going to go up to motion again i'm going to hit position and scale i'm going to go to the end of the clip use my arrow keys to find the exact part 
but make sure now you have the exact same um, waypoints for it. So I'm just gonna copy what the other one was. The other one was scale 176. So we're gonna change this to 176, 176. And if I look back at it, it was 1945 and minus 153. So it should be 1945 and minus 153. Brilliant. So now, that's a little bit of animating involved in Premiere. Uh, you can do that with any image you want. You can get a picture of a puppy if you want to have it float over the screen. You can animate with multiple images at once as well. That's why all the different channels are for. Uh, you are you are not limited to just v1 v2 v3 uh, if I click and drag an image and put it above v3 v4 suddenly appears so you can actually enhance the you can have as many channels as you really want um, next thing I'm going to show you is uh, the, uh, the actual audio itself so if I hover my mouse in between a2 and a1 where I have the one uh, audio track from the video I have this double blue, uh, double black uh, arrow icon, and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag that border down. By doing so, it extends the size of the A1 channel, and when I do that, I can see all the spikes within my video. There's a line, there's a left and a right channel within it, as you can see, L and OR, and two sets of spikes which are about the same size, and that's because they are the exact same sound. But one comes out the left and right channel. So if you're wearing headphones, it'll come out your left ear and your right ear, which is pretty cool. Uh, in between separating them, if I move my mouse again, you'll get another double black arrow line, as you can see. Uh, there's a bar, and if I click and drag that bar up and down, as you can see, like that, you'll get a little notification there that says the decibel level. So it was originally on 0.00, .00 decibels, which is the kind of the standard there. If I drag it down, it's minus, and if I bring it up, it's higher. It's on 5.63 now. That is how loud essentially it is. So if I want to make it really down, hit play, Oh, I, I wish I was made out of pizza. I wish I was made out of pizza. Or if I want to make it very quiet, bring it right down to nothing, and there's nothing. So that, that can change how loud you want it. If you want it to gradually fade, and this is kind of interesting, is that you can go over to the pen tool here in your toolbox. Uh, keyboard shortcut is P. If you want to just hit P on your keyboard or click over here, my mouse now turns to the tip of a pen. If I move my pen and bring it over to the um, decibel level line, I can make it fade out by clicking and making these little points along anywhere I want. And by doing so, I can change, I can click and drag and maneuver the sound so that it goes up and down in levels, as you can see. So uh, if I want to just make it gradually fade down, like so. And maybe I want it to fade up at the end then. It makes this curve, so it should get qu uh, quiet and then loud again. So let's. Drag our Pizza. over here and hit play. Pizza. That's a very bad example because it's so uh, short. Uh, but if I move it over here, maybe this would make a better example. I'm gonna make another low point here. And let's see it get to Pizza. quiet. It out Pizza. To loud to quiet. So you can make a wave that way. I won't go into too much detail. You can probably guess exactly how that works there. So you can make a, a nice clean line. I'm gonna go back to the V key and bring it back to the selection tool now. Um, one thing actually, I'm not sure if I mentioned, I may as well mention it again just in case, is you, can, you don't have to just move clips one at a time like so. You can in fact highlight multiple clips and drag them. So I can drag everything I want and move them. Pretty handy, just like that. Uh, and that's essentially the basics of manipulating your image. Um, if you would like to um, save as you go, and I would always recommend saving as you go because if God forbid Premiere Pro crashes, uh, you could lose most of your uh, saved content. So uh, make sure you save as you go by going up to file and hitting save or save a copy to your desktop. It's always easy just if it's on your desktop, you can find it. Um, and also keyboard shortcut is control S. If you hit control S, a little uh, box will appear saying that it is saving. Uh, if you're on a Mac, it's command S. So PC, control S, uh, Mac, command S. Uh, so save as you go. And then if you want to um, export your video, you just want to uh, hit Control M on your keyboard or Command M if you're a Mac user, or else go up to File and go down to Export, and then you can export that way.
So I'm going to show you the export settings now. It's another pretty easy thing. Export is here. I'm going to go to export media. And this box will appear as you can see. So you have a preview on your left like so. And on your right you have loads of buttons and uh, switches and digits and coding and, and whatnot. So fear, don't, do not fear all of this. Uh, if you look at the top you have format. H.264 is what you want. H.264 is um has a quite a relatively low bit rate but it's pretty solid if you're putting something on youtube this is one of my preferred formats to use especially if it's just a short like two minute video or, or whatever uh, next thing you want to look at your output name your output name is here in this blue you can uh, click and change that and you can also change the destination you are saving to i would always recommend that you save to a specific folder and remember or to the to the desktop even or somewhere you'll remember because if you just export and forget where you've actually uh, saved your project to then it will export the final video somewhere on your computer and you won't be able to find it and it's really awkward then so just make sure you know where you're saving it to uh, I'm going to use uh, maximum render quality at the bottom so that's nice and smooth and then you just hit export and when you're exporting your media you'll get a sign saying how long it will take it could take one minute it could take an hour depending on how long the video is and how much uh, effects and whatnot you've put in so that's the basics we're going to go through today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully we'll have another tutorial very soon.